Today's Cosplay Con Talk episode is sponsored by Moco Queen Color Contacts. Don't forget to use my code Wayne for 10% off at checkout at mocoqueen.com. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. How's it everyone? Wayne the Unknown here, and welcome back to another episode of Cosplay Con Talk, where we basically discuss everything pertaining to the cosplay community and conventions. I'm joined here oh. by South Carolina-based cosplayer, Cosplay Flower. How are we doing tonight? Hi, we are doing great. Um, long day as usual, but you know, that's what it is when you're in the adult life, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, that, 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 that pretty much sums it up when you're an adult. Your, right. your, life, your life is always busy it's not like when you're a kid where you just had to get up you know go to school come back do your homework and then just yeah just play video games or, wa- or, or watch <laughs> cartoons or whatever whatever you whatever you did as whatever we you know whatever people did as kids back then <laughs> <laughs> so true <laughs> um so to begin um how long have you been cosplaying for and what got you into cosplaying um, I have been cosplaying since, uh, I guess officially I would say 2017. I like to like uh, anoint the official and then the unofficial, <laughs> like 2016 unofficially. I kind of like put some stuff together and I was kind of like, ah, and then like 2017 was when he, when I really was like, oh, this is like a thing. I want to make it bigger and better. And, you know, kind of like stormed off from there um and what got me into it was I I don't know it just kind of happened uh it I was living at the time in New York City it was 2016 um somewhere along the lines like a few years before I kept on like I was aware of New York Comic Con but it's like I kept on forgetting about it in the dates and then 2016 was that point where I'm like oh snap it's 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 coming up and and like I want to dress up because I remember like I think a different year like I passed by the Javits and I was just like taking random pictures I didn't actually go to the con but I was like oh snap this is a whole thing and I'd like to see people dress up and this is before me learning about the term cosplay and everything else but I was just like oh they're dressing up that's so cool that of course 2016 I made it like I like I'm like I'm gonna go to New York Comic Con I'll find whatever pass I need to pass and then I happen to find like I I got a Thursday pass in my heart my favorite character my favorite anime character really is Sailor Mars but at that time I was just kind of like I don't think I'll do her that good justice so I kind of went with my runner uh my runner-up Jubilee and I kind of like can't go wrong with can't go wrong yeah 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 I agree uh so I pulled some stuff together a couple of things from Amazon a couple of things from like thrift stores I found in Brooklyn and lo and behold I I gave birth to (laughs) cosplay (laughs) and um officially in 2017 I moved back to the south I moved back to Charlotte North Carolina I was living with my mom at the time and and, you know I was talking about cosplay and everything else with some co-workers until I got wind that one coworker of her sister is a seamstress. And thanks to her, I was able to learn how to sew a little bit. And we built together the Jubilee jacket from the animated series. Oh, the yellow one? Yeah, the yellow nice. jacket. Yep, it, from the cartoon to the T. Well, not 100% to the T, because then we have to keep into account that, you know, like a fictional character to a real life person measurement type in this that and the third but besides that the adventure to making that jacket was just like great and amazing and you know i would that's what really got the ball rolling to me getting into like cosplay (laughs) i mean again you really can't go wrong with such i mean an iconic x-men character i mean i didn't know about who jubilee was until the animated series as well but i think that's like you got the yellow jacket the way the was it the what color gloves does she wear again um she in the cartoon series she wore yellow gloves Yellow gloves. so okay. she was wearing yellow gloves the yellow jacket her blue boots um blue jean shorts her pink shirt and it had like it didn't have a specifically the x insignia it had like a yellow insignia and like a yellow line to it and um like they weren't really hoop earrings 
well, based on the cartoon series, mind you, I don't, I don't need gatekeepers to come to me and be like, oh, well, <laughs> or, like, well, according to the contour series, she had like these, uh, I guess, somewhat ring earrings or kind of like attached to her, and then the sun, and then the pink sunglasses, and you know, and that that was pretty much it. It was she was like my favorite character as a kid when I watched that animated series. Nice. So, <laughs> New York Comic Con was your first con. And yeah. and if I had to compare it, basically you decide you as I always say when people go, want to go to their first like their they say their first con with like their first con with a big con, I always say so. Basically, you said to hell with Disneyland. You want to go to Disney World? Yeah, something like that. It was it was pretty much it. I mean, as I said at that time, I was living in New York City, so of course you know New York Comic Con was there, and I wanted in. I wanted to see what the all hubbub is about and you know misfits I guess if you will like me would kind of like fit into this little world of make-believe or it's like we're still trying to keep our inner child alive and not be so I guess air quotes adult like you know it's like you're already serious in your professional job and among other things and just like being in cosplay, being at conventions is kind of like that nice little breakaway. Well, everybody else has their own little breakaways of going on vacation here, there, and this, and this. But you know, cons, cons are well, at least for me, it's where it's at. <laughs> oh no, I I hardly agree. So, is this the uh, Jubilee cosplay that you were talking about? Yes, that's that, it. That, that looks the jacket. I I like. I usually know people would like, go online to buy the yellow jacket, but yeah. like, the fact that you and a friend made that. That is really cool. Yes, that that was yeah. It it was a lot because I remember when she was asking me, you know, what about the neck and and you know like, because the in the cartoon series you'll see that like she has like the whole neck thing, the whole mm -hmm. thing, right? And in my head, we're gonna look like in my excitement in my head, I'm like, I want to do it a hundred percent to the T, <laughs> and that would be amazing. But then I had to kind of like bring myself down a few pegs because I'm like, all right, well. Of course, in the cartoon series, it's going to look a little different than real life. So let's let's bring it over to real life where it's going to be a little bit amicable towards not only our measurements, but also how we're going to maneuver ourselves and stuff oh, yeah. like that. So, you know, in especially that neck portion of the jacket, it, it was just kind of like one of those things where it's like I get to fold it from time to time. Um, but still, it was it was. I had to kind of like bring it down slightly enough where it's like, I can feel like I can move my neck too and I won't feel as stiff. So it was just like one of those. Sorry about okay. that, everyone. Some minor technical difficulties. So you're talking about, and I actually just even pulled up a picture of uh, Jubilee from the animated series. So like. Yes, the neck. So we were left off the neck. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties. Love that. Um, yeah, so that portion of the neck, I had to kind of like, you know, bring it more towards reality in the sense um, of not being too long. I mean, let's face it, in that show, almost a good chunk of the characters have slightly unrealistic body proportions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is precisely why it's like, you know, reality over accuracy. So, you know, it. what I've learned immediately through that jacket was my best bet is to make it 85% accurate as possible while the 50, the other 15% is going to be according to my reality, which is like my measurements and how I'm going to maneuver myself and, you know, how viable all the other pieces that are going to fall into play, like will work with me. Oh no, I completely understand that. Um, so, ba <laughs> so back to conventions is some convention questions I usually ask just in general. Um, so what kind of advice would you want to give to someone who instead wants to go to a small convention for the first con? What advice would you want to give to someone who wants to go to a big convention for the first time? Like, for example, how you went to NYCC for, uh, for your first con. Um, I would say go with an open mind. And also, you don't have to cosplay. Like, you know, I get this a lot from people that have either are considering going to a convention and I, I, I get asked, but I don't dress up or anything like that. You don't need to, like, there's a lot of people that like to go just for the convention experience. They'll wear their like 
whatever pop culture type shirt, Marvel, DC, or whatever other thing that's going on, or just wear whatever clothes you choose to. Like, you don't have to be a cosplayer. You don't have to dress up in a costume. If you want to, great. It doesn't have to be elaborate either. But I would easily say just just go with an open mind. I mean, if, if you know you're going to spend money, make sure you have, like, some money to back you up. <laughs> Oh yeah, especially with them bigger cons, it's, you're gonna yeah go. <laughs> <laughs> for gotta... sure. Um, like bring your allowance money, bring whatever. If you know you're not really gonna spend, you know, like go for the experience, go for meeting cosplayers, ask questions. Um, and even if you do ask questions, you like out of maybe five people that are probably gonna look at you funny for asking questions, you're gonna get like two of them that are going to flip a lid, go out of their way to answering your questions. And who knows, you might even make a plan without even realizing it. That is pretty good sound advice. Uh, another question I ask, um, when going to a convention in general, um, advice for, and, well, you technically answered the question about people who don't go, um, who go to a con without and don't cosplay. Advice for someone who wants to go to a con in cosplay. Um, if this is your first con going and you're really like interested in cosplaying and there are like a couple of key factors that come into play and the biggest one is the budget, right? Because, you know, as you know, and including myself, like as I started to now, I've made a couple of big investments to a couple of cosplays. But if you're starting out and you're on a very tight budget or whatever the case may be, uh, just keep in mind, cosplay whatever favorite character you want to cosplay but I would easily say, don't go for the accuracy. Just like fish out three, two or three things from your said favorite character that can be reasonably within your budget and then everything else make it casual. Cause you know, you'll never know. You're always gonna kind of come up, kind of come across someone that's gonna really like what you did with your cosplay. Cause the whole purpose of cosplay is costume and you're playing with it and you're basically making your own rules. So you don't want to be, you know, and, and I know we are our own critics, but, you know, just try not to be as hard on, your, on yourself as possible. Make sure that you're going to play with it and have fun and, you know, have your starting point. This is your starting point. When you look back as you get better in cosplay you're gonna say oh my god my very first cosplay is so cringe but <laughs> you know in, in reality I always tell cosplayers take pride on that first cringe cosplay because that's what got your ball rolling to where you are now if you didn't have the first cringe or the very lackluster looking mm. cosplay you would not be where you are today. I mean we've we've all had them uh, and I agree with you like accuracy isn't everything because sometimes you want to, you got to think, do I want to look accurate or do I want to feel comfortable? Because if you go for full blown accuracy, there's that chance that you may not be comfortable. And next thing you know, you're, you're walking exactly. on a con, just hurt, sweaty, whatever. Or you have to like find you like get to the bathroom, but then you realize, Oh wait, I got all this on me. It's like, <laughs> you know, you're like taking them off like Lego pieces, trying to get to the bathroom. <laughs> And it's just getting a Lego piece off of you from time to time. And when you went out realizing it, it probably took you like 25 minutes just to get it off and use I mean, the I'm, I'm not I'm not disrespecting the cosplayers who do those full blown cosplays because like they're really well done. It's just yeah. I don't know how they like have the strength and the willpower to like go all out and do that. Cause that I got I can't imagine that you know that takes a lot of time, patience. And you know, probably a yeah. group of probably like a group of like a few people to help you, especially if you're wanting to get into those big like yeah. beast looking suits. Yeah, that's for sure. Like you you definitely when it comes to those, the little bit I've learned through other cosplayers is that you you want to have a handler, hands down. Um, you basically, and I'm not saying I'm not encouraging this, but this is kind of an experience. You basically don't eat or drink water just for the sake of, you know, like not just fitting into the cosplay, but avoiding the fact that you have to constantly use the bathroom or anything like that. And, you know, if you do drink something, it ends up being like kind of like in a boxing match, right? You know how they like splash you with water just to quickly hydrate you. It's kind of like that. It's sort of, sort of like, you know, you take a little sip of of, of liquid and you, you're slightly high to swig it around your mouth and you're just like slightly hydrated. <laughs> Until you find that window of time where like, okay, 
I've been dressed up like this for a couple hours. Now it's that time I take everything off and 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 go be a human for for the rest of the time of the con, right? So, you know, it's kind of like one of those uh, things that you experience within yourself. Like I've experienced, like I don't have an elaborate cosplay. I might have one coming up in the future, but for sure, it's something that with the cosplays that I've had in my list, it's kind of like what I've learned and sort of done myself where sometimes I just don't eat and I'll have like little pots of pop, like pieces of popcorn or like a bit of, you know, a protein bar just to kind of have something in my stomach once again i'm not encouraging this it's just something i've experienced it's kind of worked for me but you know like along the lines you, you sort of do these outrageous things just to kind of like show yourself off in your piece of art <laughs> oh no i i i wholeheartedly agree on that um <clears throat> and you and also i'm sure you would recommend that if you're going whether you've gone to many cons or you're going for your first time it doesn't hurt as i put it having a convention exit buddy with you basically someone to bring a line so you're not like have a panic attack or like you say hey i can't like i don't want to be here can we like go somewhere else so i can like relax and they don't have and like they necessarily don't have to cosplay either but i'm sure you agree that having like a friend go with you to a con is not a bad thing yeah it definitely is not like i i would say that would be a great thing to have with you like not not a thing to have you with you but it would be great person to have with you at a con I uh and I kind of do this all the time I've been to conventions by myself like I thankfully and you know like nothing bad to, like I haven't had a bad experience I haven't had anything bad happen to me uh I guess the angels are on my side to put it that way um but yeah like my the first time I went to New York Comic Con I was alone did it like I was just floating around taking pictures talking to people and this that and the third um when I went to New York Comic Con 2017 as well, I was I was alone and I think I was like, I can't remember where I was staying, but I was like, I was either staying at a relative's or or in New Jersey or um, I found a hotel room by myself. Uh, and the same thing with Dragon, well, Dragon Con on the other hand, I had roommates, but Whoa. I would still float with like make it to the convention alone and then and I would make it to the convention alone oh, and float right. around and come back to the room with roommates and stuff like that. So it's it's like. A different experience but yes i agree with that though definitely bring a, a con buddy so that way you can kind of like you know relax find your window out and and be be in good protective care because sometimes some people out there and i've heard through other cosplayers that they've had unfortunate experiences in every way possible and even though they still had somebody with them but still you mm -hmm. know it never hurts, it never hurts. it's always no. good to, to be safe I, I wholeheartedly agree. And like, every time I hear someone mention they go to Dragon Cons, like, lucky. I still want to go one of these <laughs> days. It's just, it's one of those cons, like, I know it's going to take, I'm going to need a lot of PTO, I'm going to need a lot of money, and I'm going to, like, <laughs> have to find a way to get there. But, like, it's that, like, <laughs> that con's not on my list. And I feel like anyone, and I'm sure you can agree with this, like, if you get the chance to go to Dragon Con, it's, I'm, I know it's, I've been, I've heard it's definitely worth yeah. it. I've never heard anything bad about oh. dc but and i've, I've heard it's like the con that you no, like you have to at least go to once yeah you do you do i was actually just recently when i was at uh, new york comic con i was low-key promoting dragon con to everybody <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like go to dragon con go to dragon con just like i said i know it's a budget like if they're living up north like i know it's a budget i i just sacrifice one of the cons that you would go locally or maybe hear me out sacrifice new york comic con near go to dragon con you will not regret it at least one just one year one year of of an investment to dragon con you will not regret it i didn't regret it and and I would mind you again, Mirror Comic Con is my very first con. It will always have a special place in my heart. But after I was introduced to Dragon Con and I went, I am willing to drop New York Comic Con <laughs> to make sure I show up to Dragon Con every year. And since then I've been pretty much doing that. Nice. Um, have yeah. you ever been to, have you been to any like small time cons? Do they have any cons over locally yeah. in South Carolina? Um, well, uh I moved to South Carolina in 2022, but I have been living in Charlotte since before, like since before South Carolina. So 
they have a local con there that happens in June. It literally happens during Father's Day weekend, and it's called Heroes Con. Um, it's a really cozy con. I've I've been there a couple of a couple of times. Um, and naturally, it's 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 not as big as New York Comic Con, mm. or Dragon Con, or whatever. But it's still fun. It's still fun, family friendly. Uh, you know, you have your your spot where you make it down to the main area where you have both the artists and then like some vendors. Um, and then there's like uh, on the opposite side of where the vendors and everybody else is, there's just kind of like where they have like the stage where you get to show off all uh, like, you know, I mean, sh either show off your cosplays, I guess if they have a cosplay contest or any other thing that they're showing off in the main stage. And um, and it's fun because you get to be familiar with the artists, it's a little cozier in the sense that, you know, you get to like approach the artists, talk to them um, and meet other cosplayers too that are local. Yeah, oh, that's where it's held at. Yeah. Okay, I was like, I saw it's held at the Charlotte Convention. That looks like I was just look, I looked at the website and it's like, there seems like a lot's going on for such, you yeah. know, for a, a decent sized con in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is like. I don't know like I, I I guess in my head because I've been to bigger cons I still see that as cozy I don't think it's that crazy um besides Heroes Con I've been at uh Galaxy Con that I've heard happens of in Bali around around July or so I've only been to it once but it was a great experience though I really did enjoy myself there um and I went to what is it? I think it was like Bull City Comic Con, and that's in the. Uh, it like I don't know why it's called that way, but it's it's like outside. It's in Durham. That's it, Durham, North Carolina. Um, also very tiny con, but very cute, like very very cozy in the sense. Uh, also been there once, and and that's it. Like I haven't been to anything just just now. Uh, upcoming November nineteenth there's charleston charleston comic con i believe it is so it's it's just one day it's a sunday uh i told a buddy that's local to here i'm like hey let's go he's like all right let's go um <laughs> so we'll we'll see what what goes from there uh but yeah like I, i've been to i've been to tiny cons i'm willing to go back to heroes con next year hopefully uh but yeah definitely as it's been a thing that I go to Dragon Con. Like I might not go to other, any of the tiny other cons, but Dragon Con is worth it. <laughs> well, I, 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 it, it's like you're going to multiple cons at once anyway with Dragon Con. It, it kind of is. It kind of is because it's like Dragon Con has its own sub, I guess, like cons mm -hmm. or subculture. Because then you have the people that collect the ribbons. You have the people that... um are dedicated to the Marriott carpet. You have the people that are dedicated to, I don't know, uh, oh, there's like a group of Spartans. And then you have the people that are dedicated to. Oh yeah, I, I, I saw, the, I, saw make... the, I saw the video of this year for Dragon Con. It's just yeah. awesome. <laughs> so you have like all sorts of people dedicated to one little thing or another thing. And it's, it's still just as amazing. <laughs> nice. I even got like uh just recently like I was dressed up as there's this classic anime called Ranma One Half and I was dressed up as one of the characters from it that I had kitty ears and white hair and um like I was like randomly walking and this lady approached me and she's like yeah like I'm on a side quest and I need to take a picture with someone that has I forgot how she worded it, but it was like animal ears or something else with but animal related. And she's like, and I was like, she's like, can I take a picture of you? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, not a problem. So we got a selfie together, and then I guess she got her prize from the side quest. <laughs> yeah, there's like, yeah, there's always something. <laughs> nice. Um, so. Aside from that one con, you're saying that you're going to uh, in November, uh, only in this mm -hmm. month. Um, do you plan? On, are there any other cons you plan on going to to finish out the the 2023 year? Um, that would be really my only one. Uh, I did forget to mention I did go to Whole Mat 2022. No, in 21, 
Yeah, in 21, because Ooh. that was when my best friend came from uh, Massachusetts and she couldn't make it out of the country to visit her family. So I was like, girl, come on. And I told her, like, let's go to Whole Mat. Let's have a good time. And it was our first con experience together. Whole Mat's in Florida. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar I with Holiday Mott again. What's that? Uh, I'm familiar with Holiday Matsuri. Oh, okay, okay. So, you know, like I was uh, I was there for the weekend with my bestie and we had a really great time. Um, I would be willing to go again, but it's not going to happen this year. Unfortunately, I have kind of other life plans coming up. But yeah, I can I can see myself in the future potentially going going there to kind of close off a year. Because it's like it is a really fun con to kind of say, I'm going to close off this year with Homat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, excuse but me. definitely it would be Charleston Charleston Comic Con. That would be kind of like my last con of the year, per se. Nice. So now on to the cosplay parts of this. We're going to talk about, ask you some cosplay questions. Then we're going to actually talk about the cosplays you've done. Um, so what are your thoughts on thrifting for your first cosplay, especially if you're a cosplayer on a budget or you're getting into cosplay, but you don't have a whole lot of money? What are your thoughts on uh, thrifting or upcycling? Oh my God, do it, do it. Definitely do it. Like it's like thrifting is budget friendly, upcycling also budget friendly. Um, if you're clever enough to be able to kind of like create something from the stuff that you thrifted and I've seen other cosplayers do it and they do an amazing job at it. Uh, do it. Like it pushes your boundaries from creativity. I feel like it does it to the next level. Because you are thinking a little bit beyond what you're seeing. It's like, this is, you know, you, you kind of buy this one shirt, right? And it's like, all right, this is my, my foundation for what I want to do with this cosplay. However, you're going to destroy it, remake it, and this, that, and the third. It's like, wow, you did something great right there. And I kind of did something slightly similar um, for my Captain Marvel bombshell I did. It was a fan art. I saw on Instagram and I'm like, I got to do that cosplay. So what I did is I thrifted a, a jack, a, uh, I, th I think like a suede, that's it, a suede jacket. And then I bought a fabric to create. Yep. That's it. That's her. Yeah. So that jacket is a, is a suede jacket. And I bought like a piece of fabric. That's kind of like a foul fur. And then I hand painted the back of it. Uh, and, um, what else did I do with it? And that's, and that's really it. Like it's that, that and the jacket and, and then everything else was like paints I bought to get, get it together. And then a few pins here and there to kind of give it the, I, I guess, similar accuracy to her, uh, based on the fan art, but yeah. Oh, totally, totally do it. You, you, you got, you're on a budget. You want to thrift, go for it because you will never know what you're going to end up doing. It might be as accurate as what you're trying to do or even better or different than what you wanted to do in the first place. That, that, you know, I can't argue with that. And I, again, like you said, I mean, heck, even you can find, you can even like do like, like a casual cosplay of your favorite character. Yeah. Heck yeah. Like I've done, I've done casual Jubilee in so many different occasions especially for dragon con because there's like some moments where it's like oh, i want to show off jubilee but you know without the whole jacket the whole kit and caboodle then i have a yellow jacket i bought off of amazon and then kind of like reuse the rest of the stuff from jubilee like you know the jean shorts the shirt and whatever and kind of like wayfair sunglasses and there it works i made it i made her casual nice <laughs> So I noticed with some of your cosplays that you like wearing heels. Any advice to someone, you know, man or woman, when they want to wear heels for their cosplay? Mm, well, keep in mind uh, a couple of things. Have some flats with you. Um, definitely want to have that. That's like number one. Have the flats with you. Even if, the, if it's the cheapy foldable ones, at least at some point you're going to see yourself not wanting to walk in heels the entire time, but enough to be like, you know, maybe 20 minutes on the heels where it's like people will catch, oh, I love your cosplay, take a photo here, there, this, that, and the third, and then give yourself a little break, take the heels off, put the flats on. Um, 
actually that's that's really like the biggest piece of advice on my experience uh you know like it's it's always a lot more comfortable to know that you have the heels next to you because then you don't feel as necessarily like oh my gosh I'm going to be torturing my 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 poor feet like on these heels and stuff like that um definitely the flats hands down oh I agree <laughs> and I'm sure you can I'm sure you can agree and attest to this that always break them in before you go to the con because you don't want to but you don't want to break them in go to the con next thing you know you're like your feet are hurting you go home you take oh. her off and your feet are just blistered and battered to yeah. all hell yeah definitely do that as a practice like I because most of the heels that I would wear on my cosplays is because they're heels that I already had from a few years back so they're already like shoes that I've already used however if you if one is recently getting heels and you're like planning it's you're not committing the crime of buying these heels like two three days before the con then yes I would easily encourage you to get those heels wear the thick socks, walk around them in the house for at least five or 10 minutes. So that way you can kind of like get them, you know, broken in, at least it won't feel as terrible as it would when they're like shiny new shoes per se. And it won't be as like, Oh my God. <laughs> no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, any future cosplays you plan on doing um, as I call them, uh, cosplays you're either currently working on, uh, future cosplays, and that one dream cosplay that's like right now you just can't do it because you don't have the skill, the time, or money to do it. Um. Okay, so I can definitely start off with the dream cosplay. My dream cosplay would be Demona from Gargoyle. Oh. I became a fan of her. I I just loved her demeanor. Um. I'm getting there physically, but right now when it comes to like, I want to be as accurate as possible with her feet, like her legs and like the gargoyle type feet that she has. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of looked into it and it's sort of like building these type of stilts that would be kind of like uh, mechanics to kind of make it look like. Oh, I, I know. I know which one is exactly you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would be definitely my dream cosplay. Um, then the cosplay that I'm like currently working on that I'm kind of taking my sweet time with is from an anime called Claymore. And I am going to cosplay the character Claire. Um, but well, I mean, more or less from the manga, I want to do like more of the renegade version of her where she's wearing all black. Um, she has like these belts and stuff like that and it kind of has like a whole cloak going on um so that's what I'm like slightly slowly but surely working on uh, yes that bingo that's the one um, yeah it, it, it just popped up when I looked it up yeah <laughs> uh so yeah that's definitely her her name is Claire um not in the anime, like the anime series, they have her like still wearing the uniform from where she used to be part of the organization. Only towards the end does she kind of show that she's, you know, wearing black and stuff like that. But in the manga, on the other hand, there's like a whole series of it like dedicated to her and like a group of the other claymores that are like, you know, kind of out of the organization and everything else. So I definitely want to do that. And it's, it's slightly on the works. Like I said, baby steps slowly but surely uh and what was the other question with the with the cosplays because I, I got oh, the green uh, one i got that i'm currently working on a uh, future one. Oh, a future one oh, um, no, like one that you see yourself doing like within the next year or so uh frost from mortal kombat she Ooh. was definitely my favorite fighting character uh but i want to do the version of frost that was from I don't remember the number of the Mortal Kombat, but I I, can... I think it's like uh 10 or but I remember I had it when I had my Xbox um my Xbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have an Xbox one, but uh I shucks, I for the life of me I'm not going to remember. Um that. would it be I can actually pull uh, there's the one that's from Mortal Kombat 11. There's her cyber, her cyber, 
No, not that one. It's like the one, the one or the two before that one. Oh, oh, and she's uh, like has like her hair up, and like she has the black and blue kind of like sub, very much like Sub Zero because you know they're both from the oh, same planet. Oh, 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 um, um, yeah, that's like the only two. Yep, nailed it. That's the one. Exactly the one that I want to do. Hopefully, I can get it done for for next year. Can't make any promises, but but it's 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 there, bubbling up in my head. <laughs> No, that'd be, I mean, that, I feel like that is uh, doable too. And with like your hair, you can easily use your own natural hair and just paint it, uh, dot, you know, temporarily dye it white. Yeah. 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 Heck yeah. It's like a little white, a little blue, and there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk about that, talk about that, talk about that. Um, <laughs> now into the cosplays you've done. I, I have like each different category. What's that one cosplay you've not done in so long that you would like to bring back? Um, I would say Punisher, probably like I would I would potentially see myself revamping Punisher because I did like uh, it was my first time getting into special effects makeup, like, you know, making my face bloody and eerie and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that doing something so polar opposite. So like not so girly. And, you know, I see myself as being like slightly tomboyish. You know, as much as I have my girly moments, so I like to wear my makeup. So I like to wear my makeup. <laughs> but um, three quarters of the time, I'm always like, like, how can I look not so girly? How can I break away from that uh, stereotype, right? So, you know, cosplaying the Punisher or the gender bend version of the Punisher was great. And I would be willing to come back, to bring it back, like a little bit better with the straps. Now it's like the straps kind of like broke at this point. Um and make a whole vest out of the memento mori uh and probably get a better toy gun because <laughs> last time i was at my mom's garage it broke <laughs> oh no never fun. <laughs> yeah. ne never never fun when a prop breaks yeah yeah uh, yeah i mean that... thankfully i didn't build it i just bought it at walmart and spray painted it black but you know I, I would probably get a better gun. <laughs> Sorry, my webcam just computer's getting old and webcam's getting old. Just give me a minute. There we are. I'm back. Hey. Uh, so now what's that one cosplay? I call them one and done. It's like you've did it once because a friend asked you, you were curious about it, but it just it just didn't really fit the vibe at the time. Uh Amethyst. She was like one of my first after Jubilee. She was like my other cosplay that I debuted at New York Comic Con in 2017. And she was my very favorite character. And I was like, I'm gonna do Amethyst. And I even built that was my first time building a prop too. Like I built the whip. Oh, okay, from Steven Universe. Steven Universe. Okay. Yeah. So Amethyst, I did, I built the whip. So number one, I got a little carried away. And in my head, this is where like I can easily say my first experience with, you know, reality over accuracy. I got so hyped up that I'm like, I'm gonna do it just like in the cartoons. And I made the I made the whip massively long. So it became pretty cumbersome to carry around at New York Comic Con. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's like the body paint. So, you know, it was like, it was fun to cosplay her, but it was still a challenge to kind of like manage my way around with, this is where like, you know, a a, a, co a, what was it? a cosplay handler would come into play. But of course, again, like I was going to cons by myself and I was just trying to figure this shit out by myself. I mean, sorry, this stuff out by myself. Oh, no, I know you're allowed to say the S word. I, so oh. this, this podcast is PG-13. So everyone's allowed, oh, okay. everyone's allowed to say the standard PG-13 curse word, but um, everyone does get one F word. Oh, oh, there's, just, there's just like, challenge. so yeah, you, if, <laughs> if you want to, yes, everyone gets one just like a PG 13. If any, if you say any more, they will get bleeped out. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, so you, you're, 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 you're fine. Awesome. So, yeah, like it was just kind of like trying to figure that shit out with like the body pain and everything else. Um, now I remember that 2017, uh, I was staying at a hotel in New York City, it was called the Jane Hotel. And that was like from the Jane and then heading it to the Javits Center and stuff like that. And I was like staying there alone. So 
I mean, they have like small rooms there, so it wasn't that bad. Um, is this? But this the one is from a, a photo you're tagged in. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's okay. That's it. Um, that like I think I took a picture of it when I was at home. But the thing is that it was still it was still tedious to deal with, you know, especially with the body paint and the whip. And then on top of that, like the wig, because in my head, I was like, I'm going to make it as accurate as possible. So I got like everything together. And then later on, I'm like, well, this is a challenge that I'm not going to touch again. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like tempted to do a different version of her. I think like I didn't see I didn't finish completing the series, but somewhere along the lines, I think there was like a younger version of her where she has short hair and she was wearing something different. And, you know, I'm like, I. I, I should tap into that but it's it's like a pin that I'll eventually pick up I'm not really like I'm gonna definitely do it tomorrow kind of thing oh uh pa, 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 yeah uh this version yeah 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 yeah, 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 her, yeah. her quote her quote her quote, her, her, quote, her quote unquote uh kid uh yeah I think that's like supposedly like the younger version of herself um yeah it is I mean, <laughs> uh yeah that would definitely be my one and done nice now, now this is a question now this is a question that kind of pertains to that i'm not sure if it's similar or different it's a question i don't think i've asked in a while what's been your least favorite cosplay to wear like it was uh, just it was just like it was not comfortable to wear and it just became too much of a hassle maybe maybe amethyst and i say maybe because it wasn't it wasn't that it was uncomfortable it really wasn't because i was wearing leggings and i had a really wide shirt so it's not like i was having anything tight but you know uh it was the whip that was kind of like a pain in the tail feather to have to like grab and then roll it back around my hand and then kind of like whip it out again or then like the wig that was long and it, it did look cute and everything but I was like getting kind of tangled it was like this whole thing um yeah it, it was it was an adventure for sure trying to deal with amethyst, amethyst at least in my first humble year of uh <laughs> cosplaying that that's that's fair um <laughs> so what has been your all-time favorite cosplay to wear it's like your comfort cosplay like no matter how many times or no matter how many times you wear it or however many cons you go to you you at least want to try to wear it when you can um i would say actually silk it was my first experience i ordered the suit uh via zentai zone shout out to the cosplayers that that share their discount codes because that definitely makes a world of a difference <laughs> oh, with yeah it does it does um yeah oh heck yeah like any cosplayer that's dropping a discount you better save it screenshot it anything because that dis that discount it might not be fifty dollars of a discount but that discount can go a long way with your budget gotta love those yeah. sponsors gotta love those sponsors yeah 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 so you know so shout out to you cosplayers that have your sponsors and, you know, share your discounts. But yeah, Silk for sure would be <laughs> one of those uh, cosplays that I would be, you know, willing to wear again. Like I, I kind of like the experience of wearing um, a suit. It's uh, comfortable despite the fact that I put in a couple of layers underneath it, but I do like it. Like, you know, it's kind of like it's a wiggle around like i don't know because you're not weird you're not carrying around anything else extra that you're sort of like i sort of feel like i have a sense of freedom that's for me though but i would be willing to wear silk and any other convention as well which i did recently reorder a silk suit uh during new york comic con and it did arrive but then the time it arrived it was like raining and then it got all wet mm, it's a it's a like, really well-made suit too and i saw that yes I saw like the bottom you have like those uh, the soles installed at the bottom too. Yes. So my experience with soles, uh I wouldn't do them again. They're kind of a pain in the ass. Um honestly, I re with my new silk suit that I recently ordered, I ordered it with um kung fu shoes inside them. They're a lot more comfortable. They look better and they don't feel like 
I'm not 100% sure how to describe it, but like the soul that's attached to the suit feels kind of like weird and and kind of off. It's it's the best way for me to describe it. Like I don't if you're going to buy your suit for the first time and you're, you know, looking into how you're going to do the foot version of it, if you can I've seen videos of other cosplayers that are capable of ordering the suit and separately get the shoes that they want for their suits and they'll kind of like you know dismantle that shoe and -hmm. put the sole and put the other portion inside the suit and stuff like that if you can do that kudos to you I know I don't have the skill to do that Mm -hmm. yeah and however I did you know talk to a couple of other cosplayers one of them is his name is Frank old-fashioned nerd cosplay like he's very approachable when you come to ask him questions and stuff like that and I I had to ask him questions about you know, suits, because that's what he mostly does, and kung fu shoes inserted into the suits, and he really was, you know, giving me the ups and downs about it, and I would easily say kung fu shoes, make that extra, put in that extra little bit of money for the kung fu shoes, it, it'll make a difference, definitely. Oh, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree, like, I've always, like, looking to, wanted to do the, do that, it was like, I think what I was just gonna do, just to say face, is just, buy shoes to wear over the thing because that's just a process that's just an unruly process yeah yeah i mean do at the end of the day again highlighting the word cosplay you just like play around with with whatever works for you because it's you know i don't want to be attacked by the company but you know there's no rules it's just right (laughs) if you know you know um but yeah it's 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 really what whatever you want to put in your comfortability with your cosplay and in this case with the suits if you do not want to invest in the kung fu shoes don't like just get your own shoes that would match roughly the colors of your cosplay and and go from there and and you'll feel just as comfortable because trust me a lot of cosplayers win win that way as well oh no i i i i wholeheartedly agree on that um let's see so i want to ask that one uh that's that one already uh you talked about that i'm trying to i'm trying to think here <laughs> um you like that oh <laughs> uh, yeah i may have to edit, edit it, cut this part out just so i'm not like it's staying <laughs> long in the thought process um let's see oh yeah so have you ever had any cosplay mishaps um thankfully no wait no well, I, I kind of did, but it wasn't as obvious. There it is. Uh, I was at a photo shoot at Dragon Con with um, Jason LeBoy, and I had my my uh, America Chavez cosplay on. And, you know, we were, we were done with the shoot, and it was all fun and games until, like, he observed that the bottom of my zipper kind of tore slightly off from the suit. So it kind of like, but it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't necessarily obvious. It's only like one of those things that unless you're like that close to a person <laughs> for you to easily say, oh, I noticed that you have a hole on your pants or on your suit or something like that, that he's like, oh, hey, by the way, like, it looks like the the seam got a little loose on the, on your cosplay at the bottom. And I was like, oh shit, this is bad. But that was, that was like the only mishap besides that. Um, nothing drastic then I think like when I was wearing one of my gender bend punisher I think like the buckle broke on one of the like the leg belts but like I said nothing that I'm like oh my god like this one cosplay tore on my leg or my crotch area revealed everything kind of thing it's like very minuscule things that's happened to me and and you know I guess the cosplay gods were working in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> They're already out there. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> um, so my all-time favorite question, as I call them, um, WTF convention moments or horror stories, or just uh, it's just basically a moment that made you go, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> and like it's just some weird odd crazy experience at a convention that just made you like did that just actually happen um i uh, i would say dragon con hands down because it, it's like 
Dragon Con, you just find all Ooh, sorts of oddities yeah. that you don't even think like, okay. Um uh well I think if I remember, because all right, full transparency, I just as much as I like going to Dragon Con. I will go to Dragon Con and drink, and I drink a lot. I mean, it's so, a <laughs> it, there's a reason Dragon Con is the party con. There's yeah, a exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hands down for sure, for sure. So, um, I would easily say it, it's like going to these parties at Dragon Con. Like, I felt like I would go to parties and like have a good time. Like, oh shit, you go to party. But no, Dragon Con, it's like everybody gets really wild with these parties where it's like, not only are you twerking, but you're dropped on the floor twerking. Everybody's doing the train twerking. It's like all sorts of Ooh. everything flowing around on these accoutrements of parties that I was just like, whoa, I I just learned something new. This is a whole new level of, you know, connect connection <laughs> and, and um oh a big a big big what the fuck moment that was like that threw me out was um these group of people were cosplaying from the movie oh shucks uh it was a thriller i i forgot it's um <laughs> nope no no it wasn't that Oh, I think it was. It, it was. It, it was the one where this dude has a white girlfriend, and then I think his his white family. Like, oh yeah, it's 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 a uh, get out. That's it. Get out. So you know, like where this like uh, mezzanine level uh, bar is, and then you have like the the floors in the Marriott, right? So you can see the floors in the Marriott. So there was a group of people that were cosplaying characters from the movie Get Out. So they had the whole orange suits and stuff like that. They looked creepy, creepy as heck. Like it was crazy because it was just like, they were just like standing there very eerily. And I was just, I literally was like, WTF, like, whoa. <laughs> and you know, like, I know it's cosplay, but it's kind of like that next level of cosplay that it's like, it freaks you out at some point too <laughs> that you're not sure if this is like for real for real or they're just like getting so mm -hmm. into the cosplay that you're like whoa you gotta love you gotta <laughs> love you gotta love dragon con where you will see a bunch of weird shit yes yes you will and you know it's it's next level it's like if you ever go to dragon con for the first time you have to go with an open mind don't don't be like <laughs> oh, it's going to be like this or like that or like, no, 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 no. Just, just simply go blank, mm -hmm. expect everything, expect nothing, and just have a good time. That's that's all I have. Oh, to say. I, 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 again, there's a reason Dragon Con not only has it been mentioned on this channel a lot, but there's a reason why it is considered a party con because it's <laughs> like there's always something going on, whether it's during the day, middle day or, or at night. night or late at night and just... Hoy. Yeah, uh, the level, and I'm pretty sure you've seen the memes of Dragon Con. Like mm -hmm. whatever meme you've seen, it's it's the true. most the, the, the <laughs> most the most common meme I've seen is uh Dragon Con's original uh floor. Oh yeah, yeah, the carpet. I did not experience seeing the carpet because by the time I went there for the first time, has it already has changed. But other cosplayers that I've met that have been going to Dragon Con for like five plus years have seen the carpet then because it was there for like so many years now it's like a, a, that's a whole cult the carpet is a whole cult. <laughs> you know you have people that are like dressing up in like these cute little outfits that have the carpet like not the actual carpet but like a print of the carpet and stuff like that um and yeah it's like it's like a whole thing and then you know like there was a meme that was floating around that that was a dialogue and basically saying how oh this is gonna but Dragon Con ends at this point. Yeah, it starts on like uh, basically unofficially starts on Wednesday and it ends on Monday. And the dialogue goes about like, yeah, but at what time does it stop? You don't understand. It, <laughs> it doesn't it stop. Starts, and it ends, it ends on Monday and this, that, and the third. It's like, oh, but you know, he's like proceeding to make this other person understand. No, it just 
does not stop. Like you have to stop yourself and go to bed. Ooh, but yeah. the con itself does not stop. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. And and it's it's funny because it's like I tell people that are slightly discouraged because they was they know Dragon Con is a party con, but I'm like, make Dragon Con your own experience. Mm. Don't don't necessarily rely on the fact of everybody else saying it's a party con. Yes, it is a party con. However, there are panels, there's wrestling, there's an orchestra, there's like, you know, all sorts of other things that you can come across and you make Dragon Con your own experience. You know, like I like to make it my experience of partying and going to like some groups and stuff like that. But other times, you know, like other people like to make their experience of going to panels, going to some shows and, and everything else. So, you know, Dragon Con, you can make it your experience, not not solely rely on the fact that, you know, that it's known as the party con because it is. But, you know, you know, little little people know that they can make it their own experience. So it's, a, it's oh, about no. that. Oh, no, I, I completely agree. Um, so another question. Um, what's been your all-time favorite convention experience? Like, no matter what, to this day, it's something you will always remember, no matter what. Um, I this was also 2017. I debuted, you know, my freshly created Jubilee from the series, and uh, an acquaintance came across me. Well, yeah, you know, I didn't. I didn't. He became an acquaintance after the fact, but he saw my jubilee and then he mentioned oh we should go to the marvel booth they're gonna have a cosplay contest and i had no idea of course like i just show up to cons and kind of like wander around take photos maybe talk to people kind of look around and that's really what i do uh so as this person suggested that i was just like oh that's so rad um okay and then i kind of like asked around and then i was told the time and then i got myself in line and and it was such a great great experience because through that marvel cosplay competition um i met a few people that to this day since 2017 you know keep in touch every once in a while and we recently saw each other when i when i was last there at new york comic con and it was a very beautiful experience because everybody was like oh wow it's a great you and kind of like you got, got, got a little big-headed not gonna lie uh but it was it was a very beautiful experience. I did enjoy myself. Um, that that Marvel booth cosplay competition. Um, it was just kind of like one of those things, like oh my god, this is a thing, and it can make it like I didn't win, but it was it was a lot of fun to experience and stuff like that. Uh, and and yeah, and then oh, and then just recently, I would say in Dragon Con, I debuted Jubilee Hellfire Gala. I saw I saw the picture of that that lovely dress. Oh yeah, thank you. That was a commission actually. That was like one of my big investments of cosplay. But yeah, it was it was very um endearing to see. I mean, everybody was beautiful, was handsome, gorgeous and every on, let's add more adjectives to that. But I I really felt like in awe because it was just kind of like, oh my god, I'm wearing this dress. I'm so nervous. I can't handle myself right now. But everybody was so sweet to compliment me and stuff like that. And and it really kind of like, you know, boosted my mood a little bit. But you know, <laughs> everybody else was also looking great. So, you know, it's not just me. Everybody else nice. was looking amazing. And I did like that experience a lot. It was very lovely. Nice. Um, so last question, and it's a question I've been recently asking because someone had brought it up for me to ask um what kind of impact has cosplay had on your life like what like like what's like um, what's it been doing for you well i would say the kind of impact that i've had was well i see it more in a creative aspect um where it's like besides ordering some suits some commissions uh I kind of try to push myself to do different things. Like just recently for one of my cosplays, uh, again, Rana one half, I did a half kitty, half human character and I styled the wig. Like my first time actually teasing and doing like specific, slightly anime type style on the wig. That would be, I would easily say my closest to elaborate wig styling. Cause I did a little bit of wig styling, like, you know, for Captain Marvel, but it's very like, <clears throat> very light nothing where it required me to tease several times 
in style again and tea several times like in the videos um so that's what i did with with shampoo is the name of the character that i just cosplayed so oh, okay i know who you're i know who you're i know who you're talking about now purple hair yeah uh-huh purple hair shampoo has the purple hair. yeah she has purple hair but i did i did half kitty half human shampoo so it's like i did a white i had a white wig Mm -hmm. And then my kitty ears, and then I had a tail, and I pinned it to the dress that I was wearing um, in in Dragon Con. Uh, but yeah, that was like the one cosplay that I actually teased. So you know, it's like it, it allows me to push the boundaries of doing different things besides, like in this case, sewing. Uh, so I did a cosplay prop that was with amethyst and the whip and then later on i i tried to do the prop i tried to do the weapon a weapon prop for shampoo but i didn't have time and it's because it's like something different like i'm trying to build this sphere that i for sure i would <laughs> it, it, i didn't have the time like i or the not that i didn't have the resources i just didn't have the time and the skill yet built to do that uh but I do like the creative aspect where it's like it it gets me to be like, oh, well, let me do something different with this, this cosplay. Let me do this. But it also lets me network with other cosplayers that I've seen do something. So it's a push of boundaries with my creativity, but also a means of networking with other great creative cosplayers that I can see that are approachable. Um, that are willing to help out others in the community so that way they can grow just as much too and and I try to give back the same way too like anybody that has any questions you know I'm always happy to answer where I can <clears throat> and if I cannot have an accurate answer of any kind I can think of a cosplayer that would like I would point them in the direction of like oh but I know this cosplayer did this that and the third go to that person um, and I'm pretty confident they'll give you more accurate answer of what you're looking for you know it's like you know not my skill set or anything like that not that I can't but you know I, I try to help out and give back in some way to others that have curious questions that you know they want to grow too you know let's, let's grow together let's be a squad <laughs> that's again that is some pretty sound advice and it's good to know that you know with doing this cosplay since 2016 like you've also yourself have learned some skills as well and i think yes. and and i always say it doesn't matter how long whether you've been doing this for a short time or long time cosplayers are always learning something new to add to their yes. their, their cosplay yes. repertoire mm -hmm. hands down that's that's so true <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think about it it's like life in general is like that too oh no no you're you, always you realize you learn yeah. something new yeah, you can you can teach an old dog new tricks, and you can teach a new dog old tricks. Yeah, yeah the way much. the way the way I see it. Um, any yeah. last any last minute advice you'd like to throw out there for those who are listening and are watching this? Um, I would easily say when it comes to cosplay, there is the unfortunate reality, the cosplay toxicity. Um, although it is not easy to erase, we try our best to be one of the cosplayers to do good. I feel like I, I kind of try my best. I'm not going to paint myself as a saint. Maybe I fell short in different aspects, but you know, like find a safe place, find a safe person. Um, also, and if you feel that you need to step away from social media, do it. Uh, I feel that it's, if you need to step away and but you still want to create create like don't necessarily rely on social media to create and have fun in your cosplay because that's the whole point cosplay you you, you want to costume <laughs> yourself playing the character that you like most and don't let other people with their insecurities that are projecting onto you to to rain on your parade at all like don't just don't allow that to happen if you oh, have no. to step away from social media just do it and, and I... still have it in the world I, I I wholeheartedly agree. Um, I think that should do it. Oh, real quick, as I always, because I always sometimes forget to ask us, uh, care to drop your links below so people can find out uh, where to follow you on social media. They want to stay up to date with your cosplays and or potentially see you at future conventions. Yeah, um, I would easily say Instagram. I do like cosplay flower Instagram. You, you can follow me there. Uh, honestly. I do have other sort like I have I have a TikTok that is collecting dust. I haven't done anything there in a year. I'm gonna be very transparent. I also have a Twitter 
that's also collecting dust. I haven't done much of anything. <laughs> um, and that's, the, that's really it. So like Instagram would be the main thing where I'm mostly active. If I'm not posting, cause I'm not very actively posting, I will have something in my stories. And if I'm not getting ready for a con, because usually you'll see me drop stories about, you know, doing something with a cosplay or whatever but that's when I'm close to getting ready of a con then the rest of the year it's just like me clowning around going to the gym or sharing very minuscule life experiences I guess <laughs> and memes who doesn't want to laugh <laughs> I, mean, I, can't, I, I, I can't argue with memes memes are always fun yeah. <laughs> and mainly but mainly people can find you on Instagram at uh, cosplay flower yes just be cosplay sure to look flower. for the picture of your silk cosplay Yes, my silk cosplay, definitely. That would be that would be it. <laughs> the name is still the same. I mean, sometimes I get crazy and I change the avatar, but that's 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 minus. That's minuscule. That's, <laughs> that's, minis that's minuscule. But yes, cosplay flower all together, one word. Um, try to make it sweet and easy because I know underscores, dots, numbers, and mm. everything else. Mm. You know, like. <laughs> I try to be practical in this life. <laughs> oh no, I I I I completely agree. Um, I think that should do it again. Flower, thank you for coming on to talk about your cosplay convention experience. Can't wait to see what more cosplays you do later down the road. Can't see, can't wait to hear more about the conventions you get to do later down the road. And yeah, yes, yes, I'm always happy to share. I thank you so much, Wayne, for this interview. It was fun. I loved it. Minus the. <laughs> technical difficulties oh, that no, that, that's, that's always that's always gonna happen that's always gonna happen sadly and can't <laughs> control can't control that um yeah again thank you and yeah i hope those who watch this enjoy it and those who listen to enjoy it as always i'm wayne the unknown until next time thank you for listening and as always Bye. thank you for watching